stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long may the world in sin and error pining Till He appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for kids. It's Pastor Wolf. It's great to, to have you watching our video here. I know Christmas for Kids is different this year. Normally we have you come in and decorate cookies and, and have fun with us this year. This year we have to send the fun home with you, but that's okay too. Uh, the, the members of our church that, that put on Christmas for Kids asked me to, to share the, the Christmas story with you, and, and I, I have a book that I, I want to use to do that. And, and the reason I picked this book is that this one tells the whole story. Can you imagine watching a movie and then turning it off five minutes before the end? Or, or reading a book and not reading the last chapter? Or if, or if your mom or dad would read a book to you and, and them not read the last three pages? Well, that's what a lot of people do with Christmas. We, we know what Jesus is. God born for us, that baby in the manger, our Savior who, who's going to bring us to heaven. But we need to hear the whole story, and that's why I love this Christmas book, because it, it goes beyond just the beginning. And so let me read it. I'll try and hold it up so that you can see the pictures here, too. It says, Come, my dear children, gather around. I'll tell you a story that's true of how God our Father sent his Son in love as a Savior for you. Mary and Joseph traveled for days, obeying great Caesar's decree, to go to their ancestral city to be counted and taxed properly. Joseph was born of King David's line. To Bethlehem he had to go. For this was the city of David who had lived many years ago. So even though Mary was weary, means tired, right? Expecting her child any day, they packed up their bags and they started on a long and difficult way. But when they arrived feeling tired, all weary and longing for rest, they found all the inns were too crowded to make room for another guest. Remember the Bible tells us there was no room for them in the inn. A kind innkeeper pitied their plight and guided them to his stable. You can sleep here tonight if you wish. I'll bring fresh hay when I'm able. There in the stable, Mary gave birth and cradled sweet Jesus so warm. And though he was tiny and helpless, he was God in an infant form. Right? Something very special about Jesus just outside Bethlehem. Not far away, shepherds guarded their sheep in the night. Suddenly the sky lit up like the day and the glory of God shone bright. Amazed, the shepherds fell to their knees. They shivered and cowered in fear. For an angel of God appeared to them and spoke in a voice loud and clear. Can you imagine being the shepherds? Seeing the angels show up with a message to you, you can bet they listened, right? Fear not, he said. 
I bring to you good news of great joy for mankind. In David's city is born this day a Savior, the Christ child, divine. Right, that word divine, the angel is saying what we already know. Jesus is God. The shepherds all ran to the stable as quickly as their legs could move, and there they knelt to worship the Lord and gaze upon him with great love. These shepherds were the first people to celebrate Christmas. They came to see Jesus. And this is where this book is a better Christmas book. It says, now listen, my children, I'll tell you the reason we have Christmas morn. It was for the cross and Easter tide that our Lord Jesus Christ was born. You see, he came here to love and to teach us. He came here to heal and to pray. But most of all, the Messiah came to die on a cross one sad day. For we all have hearts that are sinful. We have broken God's heart in two. And only the death of our Savior can give us a life that is new. Some of you guys know the, the rhyme that, that I taught our teachers to teach here at Redeemer that I use in chapel, right? Jesus, on the cross, washed our sins away. He suffered and he died so that we can be with him someday. See, Christmas is important because Good Friday comes after it. Jesus was born so that he could die, but then the next page tells us something amazing. But do not forget the story's end. Christ did not remain in the grave. He rose again on Easter morn, and he lives to love and to save. Right? Jesus died on the cross, and he paid for our sins, but, but he rose back to life. And now he promises that he will do that for us, too. That's why Christmas is important, not because the promise was kept, but because that was the beginning of the keeping of the promise. Easter just as important, more important than Christmas. And this book ends it perfectly. So come now, my children, be joyful. Celebrate this day with great cheer, for Jesus was born on Christmas morn as a gift for all, far and near. The end. Hopefully you guys are going to be blessed to receive Christmas gifts this year. I know some people want PlayStation 5s and other people want new dolls or new games or trucks or farm tr farmed things. But the best gift you're going to receive this year is the one you just heard about. God sent Jesus. Not just to be a cute baby in a manger, but also to be a, a man on a cross and a Savior risen from the dead. That's our greatest Christmas gift. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have an awesome time with Christmas for Kids this year. Next year, hopefully, I'll be able to be there and see you have that awesome time. But this year, celebrate it with your parents. We're happy to have you here. I also want to extend an invitation to you guys. At our church, we've been talking about Jesus as the greatest Christmas gift for the last few weeks already, and that's going to continue all the way through uh, the end of the year here. If you don't have a church home, We'd love to have you celebrate Jesus with us. And so Christmas Eve, we have three services this year. There's a service at 5 o'clock, and that one we ask everybody to wear masks at. And then we also have services at 7 and 9, and, and, and we encourage you to wear masks for that, but you don't have to. We want you here to, to celebrate this gift. And then on Christmas Day, you can come back to our church again. We have a service at 9 in the morning, and that day we, we celebrate with trumpets and everything. I'm so glad you were able to join us. I hope you'll be able to join us again in the future. May God give you a very blessed and Merry Christmas.